Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the vlog. Now you may be thinking for a minute, have I tuned into the right channel? What on earth is late before me? Cause I'm still Holston Pills, surely not on Harry Bruce 69's YouTube channel. What's going on? Well, we are going to start on a quest for the perfect lager, as I'm yet to brew one. It keeps escaping me. It's not as easy as many people make out. And every time I've tried to brew a lager, it's either been too sweet or I've just done it off the cuff and it's not been a proper recipe really. Like for instance, recently you may have seen on the pilot kit that we made a lager style beer with some quiet yeast or quiet yeast. And uh, it started off, this was just with pale malt, nothing else, and hops. And it started off very nice. The quiet yeast gave it a bit of an orangey stroke Belgian wit style flavour. And then on packaging day, when I tried it again, it had a bit of a bananary note to it. And I just wasn't sure whether the quiet yeast was right for it or not. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop trying. So, hello. In order for me to have as much data as possible, <laughs> then I would like to see what final gravity these commercial examples of the lager style finish at. So I've got six beers. I was going to get more, but then I thought, well, it's probably a bit much for me to drink in one night, to be fair. And uh, I'm out. I can hear you all laughing in the comments from here. I'll do it in an afternoon. And then what am I going to drink this evening? I'm not sure. Anyway, we've got these six beers. And what I intend to do is decant the beers into a trial jar. La -da -da -da, and float the hydrometer in there so we can have a look exactly what final gravity these beers are at. Now this isn't scientific. Although these beers are all at the same temperature, they are not at 20 degrees, which is what this Stevenson Reeve hydrometer is calibrated at. And also they're going to have varying levels of carbonation in there, which I'm not going to knock out because I do want to drink them afterwards. And, well, it's tough enough drinking lagers, isn't it? I mean, I, I definitely don't want to be drinking a flat one. I'm drinking a moderately warm one as it is. So we're going to measure them up. And then we'll pour the remaining beer into these uh, glasses and we'll buzz straight through this lot. See how we get on. I might even pause the video in between each one so I can consume it and then uh, we'll see how my uh, vocal abilities develop when we get to the probably last beer, which may be the Warsteiner. We'll see. Anyway. Don't spare the horses, James. Let's get stuck in. First thing I want to do, though, is talk to you a little bit about this hydrometer. So this is a Stevenson Reeve hydrometer. They cost in the region of £70 at sterling. And you'll see, much like myself, it's got a bulbous tip end. And the graduations on this particular model start, and you can get finer ones if you like, they start at... 10.30 and the width of my thumb about an inch 10.25, 10.20, 10.15, 10.10, and then 1000 or 10 if you like. If you like to speak like we speak in the brewing community and use the 10 as a prefix. So there we go now these come with a uh, calibration certificate you can see on there 
it says the temperature that it's calibrated at if I can focus properly it says Stevenson there as well then the code and then it says Edinburgh and then the Stevenson Reeve logo again at the top and these are very very fragile pieces of equipment indeed so I won't be taking any risks with this today so well, I'll be popping it back into its case between samples just for posterity. There we go. So I'll put that out of the way. We're going to dive straight in. Sorry, don't have a fancy trial jar. It is just a pretty cloudy, pretty old actually, plastic HDPE one. Let's dive in and have a look at cause light I believe this is probably the beer with the least amount of flavor and probably the highest amount of carbonation so if you're still with me let's go for it now this isn't your normal type of pour okay we may be here some time that is just foam. Ah, I might need to revisit this idea. Right, give me a second, we'll come back when we've got this in the jar. Okay, okay, so I've been here a while. I'm going to try a little trick. Some extra virgin olive oil. Just going to get a little bit on my finger. I don't think this is going to massively affect the. Uh, the gravity but I'm just gonna rub a bit of olive oil into the foam I know you probably can't see me doing this there we go in the hope it doesn't seem to be doing anything actually I was kinda hoping that would quickly eliminate the foam on top of the BR right then boys and girls let's drop the hydrometer into the cause light See if we can get a reading through the foam. That'll be a no then. Let's just see if we can get rid of some of this foamy foamage. There we go. So looking at that after I've released the bubbles, we're at about 10.06 there, 10.065. So we'll write that down and we'll take that reading. It's floating a bit now because of the CO2 in solution. But if we spin it, you can see it drops down to about 10.06. 10.06. Ten oh six three. So we'll take ten oh six three. Okay, so let's get the next beer on the go. We're gonna go for a four point one percent. I'm still and I'm not in focus there because I'm now manually focusing. So let's just see if we can get her in steady at first. Right, let's see how we go with the am still. We still just need to top off a bit. So we're having to use two cans for this job. Right, wow, that is a lot, a lot drier than the cores. So that is coming out at 1.02. Right, next we're gonna go for Holston Pills. Now I remember the marketing of Holston Pills saying that all sugar has turned to alcohol. So you would assume that there is very little sugar left. So it would appear that the Holston Pills does indeed have a little bit more gravity than the Amstel. Coming out at 10.05 on the nose. Let's write that down. So next we're going to go for the Czech Lager Budweiser Budvar 
Now I just have the one 500ml bottle of this, so if she don't go, then we're in bother. So I'm just going to have to wait for this one, for the foam to subside, regardless of how it pours. Right, that's the full bottle in there, and I don't have enough to take it right up to the top. But you're going to have to trust me on this one. Looking through that section, you can see how high we are. This is actually finishing at around 1.0095. So this is the sweetest beer so far, the Budweiser Budvar, 1.0095. Well, for the sake of research, next one, Pilsner Urquell. So this is another Czech Pils, and this one bounces in at 4.4% ABV. Yet again, I only have the one bottle. It looks rather fizzé, so we're just going to take our time. Hopefully we'll be able to get this into the trial jar without too much foaming and get a measurement out. Again, not enough beer in the bottle to top out the trial jar. And of course we're going to have to wait a moment or two for this foam just to settle down and we'll come and take a reading. Okay, this particular beer is really rather effervescent. So I'm just trying to spin the bubbles off the hydrometer as best I can. But it also appears to be the sweetest beer as well. And it looks like, it looks like we're knocking in at around 10, 12, 5 once the bubbles have been released from the bell of the hydrometer. So 10, 12, could be 10, 13, you know. And you know I'm going to roll with 10, 13 on that one, folks. So the Pilsner Urquell is indeed the sweetest. We've got one more to go. Warsteiner. Let's see how we get on with this one. I haven't got enough beer in there to drop the trial, uh, to drop the hydrometer in there yet, so I'm just going to let this foam subside. And while we do that, we can take a little look at the bottle caps. So this is off the Pilsner Urquell, I believe, and uh, that's quite nice, it's, it's actually embossed then the Warsteiner is a little bit more of a boring but still quite nice bottle cap and then finally the Budweiser Budvar is yeah, it's like a little football club badge that isn't it really with the line on there all very interesting anyway how are we getting on with this foam not dropped too much. Put a bit more of the beer in there. Let's drop the hydrometer in and see if we can't persuade it to disappear. There we go. Shall we do the olive oil trick again as well? A little bit of olive oil on the shaft. Oh, lubrication. It's a gag a minute on this channel, folks. Right, let's just top her up, see if we can get her right up for the money shot on this one. Oh, there we go. Oops, a daisy, chips and gravy. <laughs> Here we are then. So, finally, last but certainly by no means least, the premium beer brewed in Germany according to the German purity law Warsteiner or Vorsteiner is weighing in at the hefty specific gravity of 10.099 maybe not that much 10.09 10.08 
10.09. Maybe 10.089. 10.089. Would you concur? That's what I'm going with. So there we have it, folks. Uh, six different beers. All of the lager Pilsner style. Six completely different results. What does that tell us? Well, I'm going to drink some of the beers now. And we're going to see if, indeed, they taste sweet or they taste dry. And, uh, and we'll see if we can correlate that with what the readings say. If you know where I'm coming from, right? So, first up, we have Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, it's as cold as the Rockies. Right, okay then. So, this came out at 1.0063 on its final gravity. Let's have a taste of real. So it's really malty, quite more forward, pretty dry, pretty dry finish, kind of just vanishes when you've finished with it, and uh, it's not lingering at all. So there we go, yeah. I'd say, yeah, it tastes moderately dry. Let me just record that. Right, next on the list, we had... The Amster Beer Premium Pills in 4.1% volume. Probably made the same place as the cause. It says born in Amsterdam. Nothing wrong with that. So this beer came in at 10.02. 10.02. 1 1.0020. And this is the driest of the lot. Let's see if that is detectable on the palette. So, carries considerably more carbonation than the Coors Light, in my opinion. Very, very quick finish on the palette. Slight lingering maltiness, but it is like I'd say it's not lingering actually, it's just only there while you've got the drink in your mouth, as soon as you've swallowed, boom, it's gone. So yes, you can definitely tell the Amstel does taste dry. Dry. Not moderately dry, I said the cause was moderately dry. This is dry. Next into bat, we have Holston Pills. Holston Browery AG is what it says on the bump. Hamburg, Germany. Pure Brewing Oxalance, and this little beast weighs in at, see base of can, I'll tip it all on the floor, 5%, so got a bit more of an ABV in there, 4.1 for the Amstel, and what did we have for the cause, I don't think I actually read that out, because I've got no idea, 4%, so 5%, they say that uh, Holston Pills is fermented out completely. It finished at 10.05, so it's not as dry as the Amstel. Maybe the mash temps are different. Maybe there are some residual sugars in there, or complex carbohydrates, which the yeast can't break down. Enough waffle, young man. Let's see how dry Holston Pills is compared to the other two. not as dry. This one hangs around. I mean, there are other factors that we're not taking into account on this little experiment, such as bitterness and the perception that bitterness can have on the mouth feel, the body and the dryness of a beer. But I'm trying to be kind of, uh, you know, take these into consideration. I've drunk enough beer, I think, not tonight, I mean generally, to kind of be able to have an idea as to whether it is the the carbonation or the ABV which is influencing what I think and perceiving from the taste and yeah this beer is not as dry 
as the other two. I'd say even though it's got a lower um, final gravity, of course, it does taste a little bit sweeter to me than Coors. It's very kind of very malt forward. Yeah, the cause is probably it might be slightly more bitter, more heavily hopped, maybe. Well, I don't know. Anyway, let's progressively get more tanked up with this experiment. I better record my findings on that one. I would say moderately dry. Moderately dry, less so than cause. So than. Okay. Right, the next beer we had was the Budweiser Budvar, which now I'm going to have to drink out of the pint glasses which I decanted the trial jar into because I only had one bottle of these. Ignore the fact that it's a John Smith's glass. It's an oversized glass you can fit in more than a pint, which is perfect for foamy beers. Let's see how dry this beer tastes. And it came in at 10.095, so it is the sweetest yet, but not the sweetest overall. So we go. There's a lot more body in that beer. There's a lot more going on, without a doubt. It's got bready notes going on in there. It's not definitely not as dry, and that sweetness that comes through as well. It's not a cloying, it's kind of, um, it's a crisp sweetness, it's very nice. So if I had to drink a lager out of the four beers so far, this would be the one for me. This is alright. You'll notice as well, looking at some of the other beers, what we've got over here, the Holston Pills. It uh, probably doesn't do it justice. It is slightly darker. And then what we got here, this is what's left of the cores. It's considerably darker than the cores. But yeah, I think this is uh, this is a nice example of the style, but quite sweet. Not sweet. Um, we'll use the correct terminology. It's a, a moderate, a moderate body. Medium body, bloody moderate body, what you're on about, pal. It's a medium body, let's record that. Right, now we're going to have to. Oh, I didn't show you the bottle on the Budweiser Budvar, did I? So I hope you're still sticking with me. I hope this is interesting to you. I don't think anybody's done this kind of thing with these beers. Uh, so yeah, the Budweiser Budvar comes in at 5%, owned by the Czech Republic. Doesn't say it's brewed there, it's probably brewed. In Burton on Trent. Brewed and bottled, Budweiser Brewing Company. Oh, yeah, it is. It's brewed in the Czech Republic. Wash your mouth out, young man. Right, next beer. Next beer. I'll put that together so I don't get confused. We are going to go in for the Pilsner Urquell. Now, this was the sweetest out of all the six beers that we've tried tonight. And it came in at 10.13 or yeah, thereabouts. The ABV on this beer is 4.4 .4, and it is brewed and bottled in Pilsen. So, and it's imported by the Ashai Company. Looking at this beer, very similar in kind of colour to the, Pil uh, the Budweiser Budvar. Let's just dive in and have a taste. Whew, be three sheets to the wind at this rate. Cheers. Yeah, that is, <clears throat> you know when you're mashing in when you brew a beer and you can smell that amazing aroma of the malts, carries through in this beer, it really does. This is, I wouldn't say it's a full bodied beer, but it's a full bodied Pilsner or Lager star beer. So I would say 
um, medium, medium body, medium full, perhaps, which ties in with what we've discovered by taking the gravity reading. Let me write that down. Oh, how many have I had? Right, the last one. The last one is still in the trial jar. I don't think, yeah, we'll te team it out for posterity's sake so we can see it in the glass. And I can tell already that this is the palest beer that we've had all day. More so than the cause. The camera prob probably doesn't do it justice there because this is a full pint and that's just a skinny bit of what's left in the bottom of the glass. So the War Steiner. Oh, there's some in the bottle. I might actually try it out of the bottle so we don't get any interference from the olive oil that we have to play with. The War Steiner comes in at. Come on, 4.8% ABV and its final gravity was 1.0089. So this was the third driest beer. Now the fourth driest beer. The fourth driest beer out of the six. Let's have a little taste of Rooney, see if that kind of uh, adds up to the data. It is quite malty, but I wouldn't say it's um, it's full-bodied. It's lingering on the tongue. Let's have another go. Yes, very nice. This is also a good beer, but I'm not sure it's the driest beer. I'd say this is a medium, medium to light-bodied beer. Uh, and but I wouldn't put it as light as the canned beers that we've had. So without a doubt, these three bottled beers, these three examples of uh, Continental Lager Star beers, which are brewed in their retrospective companies and are imported obviously by whoever, and sold in Morrison's, which is where I picked all these cans of and bottles of beer up from. The three bottled beers are without doubt top of the shop and the three canned beers are the kind of thing that yeah you're just going to get thrown around as we know at a barbecue or an event and they're certainly not for the connoisseur and whilst these probably aren't what you'd necessarily associate with a connoisseur or a beer enthusiast they are still very good examples of a really tricky style of beer to brew so I hope that this video has been of some use to you in discovering mainly what the final gravities of all these commercial beers actually are. And if nothing else, it's been a bit of a laugh watching me get half cut. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I will bid you adieu. I'll say thank you very much. And I'm going to start juggling these bad boys down my gullet. Well, thank you. I'll see you on the next one. So it's a race before the missus gets out. Oh god, I better finish all the cans first, don't I, before I do the... Oh my goodness. She's going to be back any minute. I don't want to... I should think I'm some kind of alcoholic or something. Oh, that Alston Pills is a bit naff. Oh, oh, I think I'm going to be, I'm going to be thick. <laughs> <laughs>